Next question, a uh, usual question, they'll ask a uh, very important question. Uh, they'll ask for theory for 10 marks. Uh, discuss the factors uh, that should be given uh, due consideration while selecting the number of poles. Uh, what are the factors you are going to, uh, you are going to consider uh, for selecting the number of poles, whether you have to go for a year number of poles or if you want to go for a lesser number of poles. What are the factors or what are the parameters you are going to select so that we can select the number of poles with respect to the ATC machine. Okay. Now, in case of AC machine, supply uh, supply frequency and speed uh, speed of the machine uh, fixes the number of poles. Uh, while in case of a DC machine, any number of poles can be selected. However, a small range of poles uh, or a small range of number of poles uh, gives a good commercial design. Okay, that is the thing. Now, what are the factors? Uh, first, uh, consider for the first factor, uh, which is something about your uh, frequency. The frequency of uh, flux reversal is given by the formula f is equal to mp by 2. Yesterday we discussed about regarding the uh, frequency of uh, flux reversal as the uh, as your uh, armature uh, comes under uh, north pole and south, uh, south pole uh, south pole alternately, and uh, then there will be a frequency of uh, flux reversal. Okay, so uh, therefore, if you choose for large number of poles, the frequency is high. So if you go if the number of poles increase, uh, definitely the frequency of uh, flux reversal will be more because if you see this equation f is equal to mp by 2 and f frequency is dead proportional to the poles if you go for now uh, for more number of poles then the frequency of uh, flex reversals will be more and uh, what will be the consequences the consequences is nothing but to our, uh, there will be excessive uh, losses uh, iron losses is nothing but your hysteresis losses or eddy current losses it will be more okay to maintain above said losses, uh, frequency of uh, reversal, the frequency of reversal is kept at 25 to 50 hertz uh, for common ratings. Since if you go for more number of poles, definitely the frequency will be higher. If the frequency will be higher, means definitely the effects reversal will be more. And it will accounts for more insurance loss and eddy current loss, uh, eddy current losses. So what you have to do? Uh, to maintain the opposite losses, frequency of uh, flux is kept around 25 to 50 hertz uh, for common ratings. Uh, try to keep, uh, try to keep uh, the frequency in and around around uh, 50 hertz. Uh, you know that in armature, uh, either uh, the current or voltage will be AC. So try to keep the frequency within 55 to uh, 50 hertz, uh, 25 to 50 hertz. Uh, based on this range, 25 to 50 hertz, uh, what would be the corresponding pole? You can keep it. While uh, some uh, high speed DC turbo generator, the number of poles used is 2, as otherwise the frequency will become high, giving rise to excessive iron loss. So normally for turbo generator, uh, for to get uh, more speed, the number of poles normally used is 2. Or if you go for higher uh, higher pole, and then the frequency will become more. And uh, and in chain, what will happen? Uh, the number uh, the iron loss or eddy current loss or hysteresis uh, or, uh, loss, where uh, together combined the iron loss will become more. So we can sum up that. Uh, try to keep a frequency for DC machine uh, within the range of 25 to 50 hertz so that based on this range, you can select the number of poles. Okay, if you go for more number of poles, definitely uh, the frequency will be more, then the frequency of flux reversal will be more, and it will account for uh, more iron losses. That is regarding what? Frequency. Let's come for second uh, factors. Weight of iron parts. Uh, the weight of iron parts, the number of poles uh, affects the weight of uh, various parts of the magnetic circuit. If you take, uh, if you consider a uh, magnetic circuit, it's nothing but what you have uh, three parts in, in any magnetic circuit. Uh, with respect to DC machine, we have what we have your pole. Means nothing but this is nothing but your pole, a pole, and you have yoke and you have armature and you have the armature. You have pole, you have yoke and you have the pole. You have the armature. Okay. So weight of iron parts, uh, weight of iron parts means including all these things, yoke and your pole and your armature. The number of poles affects the weight of uh, weight of various parts of the magnetic circuit. And the statement says that uh, uh, the, uh, the number of poles affects the weight of the various parts. How the number of poles affects the weight of the various parts will go one by one. I will see it one by one in detail. Now here I got uh, two machines and this is called as what a two pole machine. And here you can see we have here a four pole machine okay this is four pole machine one two three four, four poles here you have two poles a two pole machine and a four pole machine let us consider total uh, total flux around the air gap uh, let to five be what let five be the total flux around the air gap and definitely if you have two poles the flux will be divided by two the flux per pole will be what five by two 
flexidi uh, flexidi yoga will be what 5 by 4 the flexidi yoga will be 5 by 4 and uh, flexidi armchair core will be what will be 5 by 4 this is for two pole machine likewise if you come for a four pole machine uh, total flux around the air gap once again total flux around the air gap will be 5 flux per pole since we have a four pole flux per pole is equal to 5 by 4 flux in the yoke will be what 5 by 8 and the flux in the armature pole will be 5 by 8 okay you can see here the flux carried by the yoke is inversely proportional to the number of poles so more number of poles yoke cross section area required is less so normally the flux uh, uh, carried by the yoke is inversely proportional to the pole and where, and if we talk with respect to the yoke area, what we call what we call this, this is called as a yoke area. Okay. If you go for more number of poles, sir, if you go for more number of poles, if you see here, this is two poles, and you, you can see here you have you have yoke area a little bit more. If you go for more number of poles, then what will happen? The yoke area get reduced. You can see here the yoke area will be get reduced. If you go at uh, more number of poles, and the yoke area will be get reduced. Okay. As a yoke carries almost steady flux, iron loss is negligible and hence large number of poles can, uh, can be a good choice to reduce the weight of the pole. Okay. Uh, since the flux in the, uh, flux in the yoke will al uh, almost will be constant, almost will be steady flux. If a uh, flux is constant in the yoke, definitely the iron loss will be negligible. And if you go for more number of poles, if you go for more number of poles, then the area of the yoke and the area of the yoke will be reduced. This is what with respect to the yoke. Uh, in consideration with the number of poles. If the number of poles increases, definitely the yoke area gate reduces and definitely the iron loss will be negligible if the flux in the yoke, uh, uh, everyone knows it will be a steady value. Next time, that is regarding the word, uh, regarding the yoke section. Then uh, if you're coming to armature section, if, if you're coming to the armature section, how the armature, uh, armature section uh, uh, will, uh, will react uh, with, uh, uh, with the number of poles. Now, flux per pole fold divided itself into two parts in armature. So, more number of uh, more number of pole armature cross section area uh, area required is less. So, once again, you can see here, if you go for more number of poles, definitely what if you go for more number of poles, then the armature cross section area will become less. Okay, it will become less if you go for more number of poles. But increase number of poles increases the iron loss in the armature core due to increase of frequency of reversal. So if you go for more number of poles, once again, uh, the frequency reversal, uh, the frequency reversal in the armature, uh, frequency reversal in the armature increases. Uh, once again, if the frequency of armature uh, in the armature increases, definitely, once again, the losses take place. What are the losses take place in the armature? Once again, uh, because these armatures are made up of uh, the laminations uh, of a ferromagnetic material, uh, definitely there will be more. Once again, there will be a eddy current loss and uh, there will be each of these things. Okay, if you go for what? Uh, if you go for more number of poles, okay, if you go for more number of poles, then the iron loss in the armature core will uh, increase uh, due to the increase in the frequency. Let us see now. Let us uh, discuss uh, in detail uh, with respect to the eddy current loss and with respect to the uh, history is loss, uh, 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 history is loss based on the number of poles you are going to select. So, what I do is here in this, I am going to take a two pole machine, uh, I am going to take two pole machine, I am, I am trying to calculate what eddy current loss in the armature pole. So, I am going to take two pole machine here and I try to calculate the eddy current loss, eddy current loss in the uh, armature. Let us see from the equation. Eddy current loss in the armature core, P is proportional to BC square into F square, BC is nothing but your flux density in the core, armature core into a frequency square. Okay. Uh, flux density is nothing but what your uh, flux by area. Okay. Flux by area. So, what is the flux in the armature core for a two pole machine? It is nothing but what? Flux in the armature core it is nothing but your 5 by 4. So, so substitute here uh, 5 by 4 fl uh, flux. Okay. 5 by 4. You know that uh, density is something about what flux by area. So for flux, flux is something about what in the armature core it is uh, 5 by 4. And a Pn by 2. It's nothing but what? The equation for frequency of uh, flux reversal. Pn by 2 whole square. Okay. Now for 2 pole machine 2 is equal to what? 2, 2 Tn divided by 2 and pi square uh, 4 AC. Then if you solve this one, what you get? Pi square n square divided by what? 16 AC square. Or AC is something but what? Uh, area of the armature area of the armature core. If you see the relation here, uh, P is proportional to 5 square n square uh, divided by 16 into AC square. So, uh, 
the eddy current loss is inversely proportional uh, inversely proportional to what the area of the armature inversely proportional to area of the armature armature if area of the armature increases uh, the eddy current uh, uh, the eddy current loss or the eddy eddy current loss uh, decreases okay like that is inversely proportional likewise if you consider for what if you consider for uh, four pole mission once again uh, same equation p is proportional to bc square f square uh, in a four pole mission uh, the flux in the armature will be what 5 by 8 and this is same thing p is equal to 4 and if you see here uh, once again what we got here phi square n square divided by 16 ac square if you see from equation 1 and 2 uh, irrespective of pole uh, irrespective of uh, irrespective of number of pole whether it is a two pole machine or uh, whether it is a four pole machine and uh, the area of the armature core the area of the armature core remains the area the area of the armature core remains so what you can say here means It is evident from the equation one and two to obtain same eddy current loss for uh, for uh, uh, for all the value of number of poles means uh, independent of pole, the armature core has to be same. So if a, even uh, with respect to any number of poles, it may be two poles or four, four poles, the armature the armature core area remains same. Okay, the armature core area decreases uh, for large number of poles and eddy current increases. So Uh, what will happen uh, if uh, this armature core area decreases? Uh, if armature core area decreases, definitely what will happen? Uh, definitely the number of pole increases. As number of pole increases, definitely the eddy current or your initial current or eddy current uh, eddy current increases. So uh, for a large number of poles, if uh, if you go for a large number of poles, then the armature core area decreases. So then definitely in turn what will happen? The eddy current increases. So. Uh, Try to keep uh, the poles uh, within the range. We are based on the uh, machine's rating. That is regarding what the hysteresis loss. Okay, irrespective of pole, you can see that armature core, armature core will be same, almost same. Suppose uh, if you uh, if you want to, if you try to uh, increase what, uh, if you try to increase the pole, increase more number of poles, then what? The armature core area decreases. Then what will happen? If uh, number of poles is more. And definitely, the frequency of flux loss will be more in the armature, and eddy current losses increases. This is regarding what uh, your eddy current losses. Likewise, we can do the analysis for what hysteresis loss. So you can see here hysteresis loss. Once again, for two pole machine, uh, it is given by the equation P is proportional to B C square F. Once again, B C is something of flux density, uh, flux by area, uh, phi by four to P n by two, two into n. So what you get here, phi square n by sixteen uh, AC. This is for two pole machine. And here for a uh, four pole machine, you can see here uh, uh, P is proportional to P C square F, and it's subscribed for uh, phi uh, flux. Uh, flux is something about what phi by A T C to P N square by two. So what you get here, phi square A by thirty two A C. If you see the equation three and four for two uh, for a two pole machine, and the area of the armature, the area of the armature core is what sixteen A C. For four pole machine, the area for armature is what the area the, the area of the armature is thirty two. AC. So as pole increases, uh, we can see as the number as the number of pole increases, you can see the area of the armature also increases. So comparing uh, comparing equation three and four for hysteresis loss, hysteresis uh, uh, loss decreases with the with the increase uh, with the increasing number of uh, pole. Okay, uh, with the increasing number of pole means uh, if uh, if number of if number of pole increases, then what will happen? If number of pole increases here. And you can see here uh, the area will uh, increase. The area of armature core will increase. If the area of armature core increases, then what will happen? The hysteresis loss decreases. So to obtain same hysteresis, uh, hysteresis loss for all value of the pole. So I want so to obtain same hysteresis loss here. So if you, whether it is a two pole machine or pole, uh, four pole machine, I want to same. I want to say same hysteresis loss. So what I do? What I do is. Uh, for both the cases, I'll try to make what I'll, I'll try. I'll try to make the area of the armature core same. Here it is what 16 AC. Here also I want to make for for uh, four pole machine. I want to make 16 AC. How can I make 16 AC? So 16 AC I can make only by what? Only by increasing the number of poles. If I want to make the area equal, then definitely what I have to make I have to increase the or uh, I have to increase the number of poles. Okay. So to obtain the same hysteresis loss for all value number of, uh, for all value of number of poles, the area of armature core is decreased. Therefore, by increasing the number of poles, the weight of area of the armature core can be uh, decreased. So, uh, what you can say that uh, to uh, to maintain the hysteresis uh, to maintain the hysteresis loss, uh, same 
and what you can do is you can increase the number of poles you can increase the number of poles if you can increase the number of poles definitely what will happen the armature area the armature area if you increase the number of poles means your armature area okay your armature core area will become what will be decreased okay so armature core area decreases uh, for large number of poles uh, for, uh, for uh, large number of poles and the current increases uh, uh, that is for this one uh, for increases so compare the expression 3 and 4 you can say that it is like decreases with the increase number of poles there there by increasing the number of poles the weight of the iron in the armature core can be decreased so if you go for a uh, more number of poles definitely the weight of uh, armature core can be increased uh, can be decreased so uh, with the heading with uh, this one uh, weight of the iron parts if you go for more number of poles then the weight of the armature then the weight of the arm uh, the, the weight of the armature core can be decreased that is regarding what uh, regarding uh, with the uh, weight of what uh, weight of the iron part with respect to the yoke and with respect to the armature with respect to the yoke definitely go for number of uh, poles the weight of the yoke area will be decreased as well as uh, in the armature the weight of the armature pole will be decreased okay that is the next third part weight of the okay, weight of the copper weight of the copper means what uh, you are going to place the conductor in the slots if you see here If you see here, this is what this is a two pole machine. Once again, this is what a four pole machine, two pole a uh, two pole machine and four pole machine. And this is nothing but you are uh, you are going to place the conductor in the slots, and this is nothing but what a wall hanging of the conductor. In the machine, you can see at the end, uh, at the uh, extreme uh, extreme periphery, you can see the wall hanging of the conductors. Okay. So what what will be the weight of the copper? Let us see for two pole machines, and what will be the weight of the copper in the four pole machine? Whether the weight of the copper in the four pole machine will be less. Or the weight of the copper in the two in the two pole machine will be more. Let us see. Okay. Now, portions of the conductor accommodated in the slot uh, contributes to the production of EMF for the torque. Therefore, it is called as active active copper. So, whatever the conductor places in the slots, I mean, whatever the conductor places in the slots, okay, that will contribute for EMF for the torque. Uh, and those are called as a active. Uh, those are called as a active copper. Means this one. This is a this is a front coil. This is a back coil. These are called as these are the conductor placed in the uh, slot. These are called as a active copper. Portions of the conductor, uh, the portion of the conductor in lower end only provides the connection, but uh, it does not contribute in the production of EMF on top. Therefore, it is called as inactive copper. As the ratio of inactive copper to active copper is less, which is become cheaper. So. Uh, this over hanging sir this over hanging so whether in four poles or uh, whether in two poles or four poles this over hanging will never contribute for emf for a top top production and uh, this portions of copper will, will, will uh, called as what inactive copper and this portions of the conductor is called as what is called as uh, active copper so if you take the ratio there as a ratio of inactive copper to the active copper is less then machines becomes cheaper means if the ratio of uh, this uh, over hanging to the active copper is less then machine will be cheaper next uh, next uh, for constant diameter for, for the constant diameter of your armature for the constant diameter for armature pole pitch decreases with increasing number of pole pole pitch decreases with increasing number of pole which further reduces the length of the conductor in the overhang position so it is clear that the copper used in two pole machine is more than the copper used in the four pole machine also the overhang protector also the core is more as in case of a uh, two pole machine which gives you uh, which gives large overall length of the machine okay see here if you consider a two pole machine and if you consider a four pole machine so i can see here the pole pitch if you take pole pitch will be more here the pole pitch will be more in two pole machine likewise what the over hanging of the copper will be more in two pole machine if you take a four pole machine different what will happen the pole pitch will become less as you as you increase number of poles the pole pitch will become less you can see here here the pole pitch for for, for four poles the pole pitch is what less okay then what will happen uh, the even uh, the inactive copper is nothing but your over hanging of copper also become less so what you can say is Uh, what you can see means the weight of the copper. The weight of the copper will be less, uh, less in compared with the four pole machine, uh, for, uh, uh, less in the four pole machine in compared with the two pole machine. So the weight of the copper or more copper is used for two pole machine because most of the copper will, will be get wasted for this power hanging. 
whereas you go for a number of process increase the overhanging will be what the overhanging will be less and this overhanging will be less and even uh, even the pole picture even the pole picture will be less so that uh, the copper can be saved okay so also the overhead uh, position outside the core is, uh, is more in case of two pole machine which gives large overall length of the machine so even uh, this overhanging will be more uh, so the length of the machine length of the machine also will be more and uh, here in this case uh, in this case of a four pole machine the overall angle uh, the overall angle will be less and even uh, the length of the machine also will be less that is one next last point as a field mmf is inversely proportional to number of pole two pole machines will uh, will have more field mmf required compared for a four pole machine this means the weight of the copper number of turns mean length of main turn field copper loss is more in case of a two pole machine so what will happen in a two pole if you take two pole machine the field mmf field mmf means the field uh, the mmf uh, or the mmf produced by the field and uh, the mmf uh, produced by the field is inversely proportional to the pole okay if a pole is less means your mmf will be the field mmf will be more okay okay two pole machines will have more field mmf required compared for four uh, for pole machine definitely if number of poles is uh, become more then the field mmf will be lesser field mmf uh, field mmf is nothing but out your main uh, your main flux will your main flux where the flux is produced in your uh, field okay that's one this means the weight of the copper number of turns the length of main turn field copper loss is more in case of two pole machine so normally if you take uh, uh, the field cover it means uh, uh, the copper loss the copper loss uh, in the armature the copper loss uh, in the field normally what will happens it will be more it will be more in a two pole machine because you are going to use uh, a more uh, more amount of copper in two pole machine as uh, compared to what uh, compared to your uh, four pole okay you can sum up that uh, the copper loss uh, the copper loss uh, will be more yeah, will be more in case of two pole machine as compared with a, a four pole machine and also with respect to the weight of the copper the weight of the copper will be less seen as the number of poles increases uh, the weight of the copper in four pole machine will be less compared to the two pole machine that is regarding what weight of the uh, weight of the copper okay weight of the copper means the, the copper is uh, what is used for uh do uh, winding on the armature slots also in winding on the uh, winding on your winding on the magnetic poles magnetic poles for okay? that the magnetic poles that is regarding what weight of the copper so you can say finally you can say that uh, if you go for uh, more number of poles uh, the amount of copper required will be less uh, compared to the uh, two pole machine that is regarding weight of the copper let's come for length of the commutator what should be the length of the commutator current collected by each brush arm depends on the number of poles if a number uh, because the commutator uh, the number of commutator depends on the number of poles if more number of poles more number of commutator if you see here in two pole machine we have two commutator in, in two commutator you can see the current divides the current divides uh, exactly by half likewise if you go if you go for four number of poles definitely what you'll have we have we have we, you have a four commutators and you, if you have a four commutator means once again the current divided by four parts means i a by 4 i a by 4 i a by 4 i a by 4 here the current divides into four parts okay more number of poles means current per uh, current per brush arm is less and hence less area and thickness of brush so if you go for if you go for a uh, if you go for a two pole machine then definitely what will be the current uh, the current divided exactly by two and the area of brush the area of brush will be definitely more the area of uh, brush will be definitely more and if a uh, number of poles increases definitely the commutator uh, the, the number of commutator also increases but uh, the area of the brush uh, the area of the brush where you where, where we're going to collect the current so it will be decreases so when the area uh, will be decreases reduction in the brush thickness results in the reduction of length of commutator and overall length of the machine so once you have a reduction in brush reduction in the brush area means definitely what the length of the commutator will be reduced and finally the overall length of the machine also will be reduced so uh, you can sum up that uh, if you go for uh, if you go for more number of poles if you go for more number of poles then uh, the length uh, will have uh, will have same number of commutator but the reduction in the brush thickness also will reduce the a length of the commutator and finally the overall machine length also, also will be reduced okay so you can sum up that 
the length of the commutator the length of the commutator depends upon the number of poles more number of poles then the length of the commutator will get reduced that is regarding the length of commutator next uh, come for uh, labor charges uh, labor charges means uh, uh, to assemble uh, to assemble your field uh, to assemble your armature core uh, and assemble your commutator what will be the labor charges so okay what will be the labor charges let us see now labor charges uh, let us see the emf equation emf generated e is proportional to what phi z n p by 60 a for dc machine and n is nothing but rpm convert into rps uh, convert into rps so n is uh, n is equal to what n by 60 so 16 to n so 60 60 will get cancelled then uh, yeah, emf generated will be what proportional to phi z n p by a if phi and p are constant if flux and p are constant then z the number of conductors number of conductors proportional to ea divided by n where e is something what the emf the emf are generated a is something what the number of parallel path and n is something what the speed okay so this is not a capital n this is small n okay make a change here this is a small n it's not a capital n okay so uh, for a lap winding a is equal to p everyone knows for lap winding number of parallel paths is equal to number of poles so number of conductors and armature pole increases with increase number of poles so number of uh, pole increases means definitely the number of conductors and the armature coil increases armature pole increases with the increase in number of poles for wave winding a is equal to 2 everyone knows the parallel path a is equal to so the number of conductor and armature pole is independent of the pole so here the armature coil the number of conductor and the, the number of conductor and the armature coil is independent of the pole so whatever the conductor going to place in the armature coil is independent of the pole but in case of a lap winding uh, the number of conductors in the armature coil will be depending on number of poles okay now number of commutator segments are same as number of armature coils or it is same as a, a number of poles you know that number of commutator segment depends on the uh, depends on the number of poles and also the number of field coil is same as the number of poles as the number of poles increases here as the number of poles increases then you have to or the field coil also increases okay if you have four poles means we have four field uh, four field coils here we have two poles means we have two field coils so as number of poles increases the armature uh, the uh, the number of conductors in the armature also increases and even the field coil also increases also the commutator segment also increases and if, uh, if these things are increased definitely the labor charge the labor charge also increases so the labor charge for armature coil field coil winding increases with increase in the number of poles so definitely the labor charge increases with the number of poles for four for four poles to wind the field winding around this poles in we require more labor charge and even uh, for uh, making the armature winding it also increases the number of conductor plus armature winding also increases so finally you can say that uh, if uh, if you go for more number of poles then the labor charges increases that is the case next flash over number of uh, pressure is equal to number of poles so as i told number of pressure uh, number of pressure will be equal to what will equal to the number of poles so if you go for uh, if you go for uh, more number of poles you can see here for you can see here uh, for two pole you can see here the pressures are placed exactly at uh, almost 180 degree uh, for pole four now each pressure is placed at what uh, because uh, number of pressures is, is equal to number of poles number of poles are number of commutators uh, number of poles is equal to number of commutators number of commutators is equal to, once again is equal to number of pressures so if you go for four poles then you can see here you have four pressures then you can see here now the pressures are placed in uh, around 90 degree if you go for six poles then once again uh, the pressures are uh, there may be a six pressures and the pressures are placed in a around 45 degrees so as you go on increasing number of poles and uh, the, the, the distance between the adjacent uh, pressures will be very less and there is a possibility of what there is a possibility of uh, flash over during the commutation process there will be a possibility of flash over hence uh, if you increase number of poles uh, if we increase number of force for same diameter a uh, distance between the adjacent brush keeping diameter of the diameter of the armature same the distance be between the adjacent brush arm decreases with increase number of force hence it leads to a possibility of flash over so, okay it uh, uh, leads to a possibility of a flash over uh, with respect to your uh, brushes okay so see that uh, you can select what appropriate number of force next uh, final one uh, distortion of field form. Distortion of field form means what? Is the field form is something what your uh, uh, main flux, flux produced by the field, 
flux produced by the uh, flux produced by the field is something but what you are made flux flux produced by this uh, field with a sort of magnetic pole nothing but your uh, with an, uh, nothing but your main flux whatever the flux produced by the magnetic poles has to pass through this air gap and that flux has to what work on your armature so what a lab point of discussion of field form okay now means what your main flux will uh, your main flux will get distorted how do you the main flux will be, get distorted if there is a more armature reaction then your main flux will be get distorted that uh, distorted let us see your armature mm -hmm. armature mm of -hmm. mm of pole ata is nothing but your uh, mm of armature is equal to it's given by this formula ac by 2 ac something but ampere conductor by 2 into pole page ac by 2 into pi d by p you know nothing but what we get here ac by 2 into p this is the thing so if uh, mm of armature is inversely proportional what inversely proportional to pole if there is more number of poles then what your the mm of the armature will become less or uh, if you have less number of poles then the mm of the armature will become more so if mm of the armature uh, mm of the armature is small then what will happen uh, there will be more uh, uh, armature reaction so there will be more armature reaction and definitely there will be more uh, frequency of flux reversal okay a more armature reaction this armature reaction what it distorts it distorts the main flux distorts the main flux is nothing but what distortion of free form therefore the armature mm per pole varies in proportion to poles hence with a smaller number of poles the armature mm per pole increases resulting in the distortion of free form a reduction in the flux under load condition so if uh, if a number of poles is less the mm of the armature will be more resulting in the more armature reaction If armature reaction is more definitely it will distort the main flux in the area that should not happen under the loaded condition so see that uh, you have to yeah so see that uh, you have to keep what a sufficient number of poles means armature pole uh, so you have to keep that sufficient number of poles if you go for less poles then armature reaction will be more which will uh, which will distort the main flux okay uh, these are what uh, these are the seven factors uh, you have to take into consideration by selecting what by selecting the number of poles whether it is a, whether you have to select the four poles or two poles or six poles these are the factors you have to consider based on this factor you have to decide the number of poles once again once again with the rating of the machine a very much important uh, question and the last uh, what are the factor uh, going to consider by selecting the number of poles definite question the mass so once again i'll repeat the normally have a, a four theory question in this machine First, as I, as I explained earlier, uh, the specific electric loading and specific magnetic loading the factors should be considered. Then, number of poles. Then we have what are the factors should be considered for armature slots. Then the output equation. Out of these four uh, theory uh, theory question, any two will be as well. Any two questions will be as well in the uh, DC machine question. Now, let us go for uh, another important question. Same thing. Discuss the factors that should be given due consideration. while selecting the number of armature slots means uh, armature slots means uh, definitely if you go back to the figure here this is armature and you have uh, and you have what here yeah, yeah, how much slot how much armature slots should be selected whether you go for a large number of armature slots or whether you go for a less number of armature slots should be selected what are the factors should be considered let us go one by one what are the factors should be considered the following factors should be considered by selecting the number of armature slots We are well selecting the number of armature slot. What is the first factor? Mechanical uh, difficulties. What is the mechanical difficulties? Mechanical difficulties is nothing but what? So manufacturing the, uh, the uh, to manufacture the slot. Uh, slot is nothing but what? You are going to make the uh, make the armature stamping uh, with the number of slots. Means is nothing but uh, mechanical difficulties. Means nothing but regarding to the production of uh, production of uh, production of your armature stampings. Now see, here, if you choose large number of slots, if you choose a large number of slots, the slot pitch, uh, the slot pitch becomes smaller. So if you go for large number of slots, the slot pitch between the uh, center point of one slot to center point of other slot will become smaller. Consequently, the width of the tooth gets smaller. Okay. So consequently, what will happen? Yeah, the width of the uh, tooth gets smaller. If you go for large number of slots, the width of the tooth gets smaller. This may lead to difficulty in construction for reason that it will be difficult to support the teeth at the ventilating ducts without obstructing the ventilation. So ventilation is very much important uh, for cooling purpose. And if you go for a uh, more number of slots, and uh, consequently the width of the tooth will be smaller. 
if you want to keep the good cup small uh, cup tooth is smaller then it will be difficult to uh, manufacture uh, difficult to manufacture those stampings uh, keeping in the mind uh, keeping in the mind with uh, respect to the ventilation for ventilation uh, for uh, for your armature you have to leave some ventilation ventilation for uh, after uh, a few armature stampings you have to everyone uh, i see i think i have spent in the ac machine in sequence machine after uh, certain uh, certain length of the stampings we have to do uh, we have to leave for uh, ventilation so while leaving for the ventilation then it's very difficult to what difficult to uh, what uh, to uh, difficult to build this uh, what build this bits of it put so that uh, that mechanical difficulty is there will go for large number of slots uh, for what uh, to keep the uh, tooth width smaller if you want to keep a tooth smaller then there will be some difficulties uh, with respect to the ventilation uh, that is, uh, that should be taken into consideration second point the cooling of armature conductors okay if you choose large number of slots uh, if you choose large number of slots the number of conductor per slot will be less therefore only few conductors are, are bunched together thus the cooling of armature conductor is better if a larger number of slots are taken this is uh, a direct simple one if you go for large number of conductors large number of slots less number of conductors are placed in the slot if there is a less number of slots placed in the conductor definitely we have better cooling so uh, better cooling if you go for larger number of slots this is very much important one flux pulsation uh, flux pulsation what do you mean by uh, flux pulsation yes here change in air gap flux due to slotting is called as a flux pulsation see here if you see this if you see this figure this is something about your uh, hole and this is something about your arm uh, nothing about your armature and this is nothing about your air gap so change in the air gap flux due to slotting see here this is nothing about slotting is nothing about slots you can see here this is nothing but slotting this are called as a slot so change in the flux due to slotting is called as a flux uh, flux uh, pulsation you see that uh, the flux in the air gap uh, should uh, to maintain constant then the, there should not be too much uh, flux pulsation so in the air gap the flux uh, should be almost constant but that depends once again uh, that depends upon how much how much number uh, how, how many number of slots you are going to place or you are going to place in the each uh, magnetic pole okay each magnetic pole with a large number of slots the flux pulsation are reduced and therefore there is reduction in pole phase losses and in the noise level of the machine okay with a large number of slots the flux pulsation are reduced so we have to go for what you have to go for large number of slots so that uh, the flux pulsation will be reduced and even the noise level of the machine also will reduce you cannot see let us let us come in yeah, you have here what we have the two figures here a and b flux pulsation with integral number of slots we can see with the integral number of slots per pole see here. when the flux passes from pole to armature through five teeth consider consider a here consider figure a now the flux is passing from what uh, passing from your field to the armature when the flux passes from pole to the armature through five teeth the five teeth means what you can take it. this is this is slot and this is teeth so 1 2 3 4 5 okay so if you take uh, this uh, pole arc uh, how many teeth comes under the pole arc here or how many teeth uh, comes under the pole arc so five teeth 1 2 3 4 5 five teeth that's the meaning here the flux passes from the pole to the armature through five teeth that is the figure a the, if the armature moves off slot pitch to the right if the armature means if armature moves right side means if we are rotating here if armature moves a uh, most half slot half slot means what you can see here this here this is a uh, uh, this is a position here now you can see this is a position now if armature moves by half slot means exactly now armature if armature rotate right side means armature rotate right side it moves by half slot half slot means what uh, the extreme end of your uh, pole arc comes under exactly at half exactly the half of the teeth so if armature moves half slot uh, half slot pitch to the right side uh, flux passes from pole to the armature through six teeth now if you see here now if armature moves exactly by half slot now uh, you can see here uh, the flux passes from pole to the armature through six teeth the six teeth means you can see here 1 2 3 4 this is 5 this is 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 
and the flux uh, the flux passes from the pole to the armature through 16th in the figure the flux passes from our uh, uh, passes through the armature by uh, with respect to 5th in this case you can say that hence the flux positivity in the air gap as armature rotates means so what you can say uh, reluctance through air gap uh, at position a is greater than position b what is meant by reluctance reluctance is nothing but what the up, 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 uh, is nothing but the opposition to the flow of flux so uh, if it is come under uh, if it is uh, if a flux is uh, flux passing through the armature comes under uh, 5th the reluctance will be more the reluctance will be more uh, compared to the uh, flux uh, passing through 16th so as number as uh, okay flux passing through 16th uh, so what you can say that uh, uh, the reluctance uh, the reluctance offered should be less because whatever the whatever the flux produced in the field has to pass onto the air gap and to the armature so the reluctance the reluctance offered in the air gap should be as less so what you can say that more number of uh, teeth are no more than number of tooth should come under what uh, should come under the your polar should come under the polar then what will happen and uh, then you can say that the reluctance offered by the air gap the reluctance offered by the air gap will be less so if le less number of teeth comes under uh, comes comes under the pole arc then there will be more reluctance in the air gap if more number of teeth comes under the uh, comes under the air gap and there will be less reluctance and even the flux pulsation uh, 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 flux position will be less uh, when does the uh, flux position will become more definitely when there is more reluctance in the air gap when there is a more opposition to the flow of flux then what will happen there will be a, a flux position that means nothing but a disturbance in the flux it is regarding what uh, uh, flux position next uh, come to figure uh, a and b now see it and there is a regard a, a and b next uh, flux position with the integral means uh, if you go for a uh, integral slot not uh, uh, number of slots will be integer but if you go for integral slot what will happen so what will happen here in this figure we have seen that uh, if, le if less number of teeth uh, under the pole arc uh, there will be more reluctance so there will be more uh, flux position if more number of teeth uh, under the pole arc uh, will be less reluctance therefore uh, less pulse uh, less pulse uh, less flux positions so come to figure uh, this figure a and b you can see here once again you can see here in this figure you can see when the flux passes from pole to armature five and half teeth you can see a five and half teeth this is for one two three four five here exactly half so five and half teeth here in this figure the flux flows uh, in a five and half teeth come to figure here then uh, then if your armature rotates if armature moves uh, off slot uh, pitch to the right if armature root, uh, rotates uh, Right side by half slot. Means you can see here uh, in this figure the armature rotates by half slot. See here this point will come under exactly at half slot here. You can see here half slot. Then how many teeth comes under the uh, under the pole arc? One, two, three, four, five, six, six and half. So then uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is uh, one. Uh, how many how many teeth? Uh, so exactly here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Here half. Okay, so once again, uh, find of teeth. Uh, find of uh, teeth will, uh, will comes uh, comes under the uh, flex distribution from the uh, from the pole to the armature. So if you maintain like this way, reluctance to the air gap in position A and the position B is almost same. It's almost same. Means what? If I maintain, uh, if I uh, if I maintain the if I maintain what? Uh, if I if I maintain the integral slot, means integral uh, integral slot means uh, the number of slots should not be integer. It is nothing but a, a fraction. You can see here uh, five plus half. You can see here five plus half. If you see here, if you see the slots also here, you can if you see the slot also here one, two, three, four, five, five and half slot. Here also you can see here one, two, three, four, five, five and half slot. So if you maintain the fraction number of slots, it should not be a entire integer. Here five and half slot. So if you maintain the uh, if you maintain uh, five and half slots, okay, comes under uh, comes under the pole arc. In the one pole arc, if you maintain the uh, five and half slot, means it should be a uh, slot should be a fraction. Then what then what happens? The reluctance offered the reluctance offered in this air gap and the reluctance offered in this air gap will be same. 
okay it will be same if you maintain what if you maintain the fraction number of slots sir. means five and a half slots here is a five and a half slots the reluctance offered uh, in this air gap and in this air gap will be same and the uh, flux position will be same but not in this case here not in this case here here we have what here we have here we have got uh, equal number here we got what uh, one two three four five and here you got six Okay, then what will happen? The reluctance offered here will be more. Okay, reluctance offered here will be more compared to uh, compared to the uh, 60th uh, coming under uh, this polar. So we can sum up that uh, regarding the uh, flux position. Try to maintain. Try to maintain the fraction number of slots under each polar. Try to maintain the fraction number of slots under each polar or fraction number of poles or fraction number of teeth. Either you maintain the fractional number of slots, or you maintain the fractional number of teeth, so that the reluctance offered offered in both the cases will be same. It will be same, and the flux position will remain same. That is regarding what? Uh, that is regarding the flux position. So you can end up that maintain maintain the fractional number of teeth or a fractional number of slots under a pole arc, so that. The reluctance, uh, the reluctance, or uh, opposition offered by the air gap, uh, by the in the air gap for flow of flux will be same for both the case. That is the meaning. Hence, no flux position in the air gap as armature protects. So normal, what happens if you maintain this uh, fractional number of slots, fractional number of slots, or a fractional number of poles, then uh, the uh, the reluctance offered, the reluctance offered, uh, offered uh, in the air gap. Will be almost same or it will be almost negligible. Then what will happen? The flux position will be reduced. Will be reduced. If you go for fractional number of slots, but now in the case here, yeah, you go for a full, a full. Uh, uh, the slots will be an integer. Even the teeth will be an integer, integer value. Then uh, there will be a flux position. That is the meaning. Next, uh, next factors uh, commutation. Uh, for a sparkless commutation, and the flux pulsation and oscillation under the interpole needs to be avoided. Uh, so, what will happen uh, for a uh, sparkless commutation? Uh, flux pulsation means uh, in the interpole region because this is a main pole. In between the main pole, we have an interpole. So, uh, for interpole means in, in, in the interpole region. In the interpole region, if you see, if you go back, back to this figure, okay, okay, this is main pole, and this is, here there will be interpole. In the interpole region uh, to have a sparkless commutation, so there should not be what there should not be any uh, flux pulsation. Okay, uh, so there should not be any flux pulsation. So this is the interpole region. Uh, whatever the slots comes under the interpole region, and there should not uh, there should not be any uh, flux pulsation. Okay, so for a sparkless commutation, the flux pulsation and the oscillation under the interpole region should be avoided. Uh, this can be achieved with large number of slots per pole. In fact, that the number of slots there in the region between the two adjacent poles would be at least three pole region. Means in the interpole region between this point, the adjacent, the adjacent tip of the poles, we have what you have the interpole region. So between uh, between uh, this region, how many slots you have to maintain? At least three slots you have to maintain between. This point to this point, we have interpole. In that, how many slots you have to maintain? At least you have to maintain three slots. If you maintain uh, three slots uh, between the two adjacent poles, between the tips of two adjacent poles, then uh, this sparkless commutation is possible. And even the flux position will be less, it will be avoided. This is regarding what commutation. The final point cost. So definitely a smaller number of slots are desirable considering the cost and as the charges for punching the slots increasing with, with their number. Further, with small number of slots, there are few slots to insulate and therefore the cost of insulation also goes down. Okay. If you go for a more number of slots, if you go for more number of slots, more currently should be placed in the slots. Okay, then definitely the cost will be more. Uh, if you go for less number of slots, because you have to want to you want to make the stamping, so stamping for uh, armature. So if you go for less number of slots, the punching of slots will be lesser. So definitely the cost will be lesser. And even the providing insulation in the slot will also go down. So less number of slots, cost will be less. If you go for more number of slots, the insulation uh, you have to even you, you, you want to go, uh, you want to provide more insulation. So definitely the cost will go up. Okay. 
these are the five factors uh, five factors uh, should be considered uh, should be considered for what for uh, the selection of a number of armature slots how many 